Join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us here on Friday edition of Bible Tract Echoes. I hope that you are excited that this is near the end of the week. And uh, if you are like many people listening, you have plans for this weekend, some things you want to accomplish. And I hope that you do have some things you want to accomplish. Having some goals is a very good thing. One goal you need to have is to be in God's house, to be in your local church for all the service, Sunday services and be engulfed in the ministry of worshiping, the ministry of listening to the word of God, the ministry of encouraging your pastor, the ministry of staying awake when he preaches, <laughs> the ministry of obeying the word of God. Oh, my friend, I hope you'll be in your place coming this coming Sunday, uh, a place where the Bible is honored. People bring their Bibles. The pastor preaches from the word. I have my Bible open to Psalm 107. If you are in a place to stop and turn there with me, I would be really appreciate you doing that. As many of you do realize already, the Bible Tract Echoes is the radio side of Bible Tracts Incorporated. I have one of our tracks in front of me, one of our great tracks. Just many people come to know Christ through this track. You know what it is? Well, I'll tell you in a moment. But you need this track. And to get it, you can get it free from us. And you can get a bunch of other tracks free from us, but you have to tell us where you're at. The telephone number I'm going to give you in a moment. You can call and ask for a free sample packet of all of our tracks. I'm going to also give you our website address. You can use that and get a free sample packet of our tracks. Also, you can uh, uh, write to us using what is commonly called as the mail. Uh, some people who are so into the using their internet call it snail mail, but you know what? We get a lot of snail mail, and we appreciate that. At the end of the broadcast, Pastor Ken, our announcer, will be giving you the mailing address, and you can use either the phone number, the website address, or the uh, postal address and contact us. We would love to send you free of charge a sample packet of our English tracks. The one in my hand is called The Gift. The Gift. And my friend, the salvation is a gift, not of works lest any man should boast. You know that, I know that, but so many people are so confused about that. They say with their mouth that heaven and salvation is a gift, but then they immediately turn around and talk about what they need to do to get to heaven. They need to get baptized. They need to live a moral life uh, and so on. All those things are good and right and proper, but not to gain salvation, but only as evidences after we are saved. Why don't you write to us now? As I said, the mailing address will be given at the end by Pastor Ken. Right now, I'm going to give you the telephone number. Are you ready? It goes like this. The area code to call is area code 309. Then 828-6888. One more time. You can call us here. We're located in central Illinois. The, the area code for us is 309-828-6888. As I said as well, we have a website. You can go there. The website address is www.bibletracksinc.org. Inc. is I-N-C, short for incorporated. www.bibletracksinc.org. All right. We are back in, in Psalm 107. And the first 32 verses of this psalm are taken up with four pictures. We've seen two of them so far. There are pictures of what a person's life is without Jesus Christ, and then the picture of Jesus Christ reaching down, God Almighty reaching down and saving them from their condition. What are people without Christ like? We saw already in the early part of this uh, psalm, verses 4 through 9, that they are lost travelers. Verses 10 through 16, they are prisoners and bound in a prison house of their own making, their own sinfulness. That's 10 through 16. I'm going to begin reading in verse 17 today through 22. People without Christ are pictured as sick patients. You know what a patient is, a person in the hospital. Verse 17, fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are 
afflicted. The word affliction deals is a word often used of a physical affliction. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them. There's another reference to being sick. Healed them and delivered them from their dis- uh, destruction. Oh, that men would uh, praise the Lord for his goodness and for the wonderful works of the children of men, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. People without Jesus Christ are pictured here. The the picture we're given is of being a sick patient. Sick. Now, let's walk through here. There are four things in this passage at least given to us. Number one, the patient's name. If you go to the chart of this patient and look for their name, you'll find it there. Verse 17, it says, fools, because of their transgressions and because their iniquity are afflicted. You're, my friend, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, you are acting foolishly. You are a fool. Why? Because you are going through your spiritual condition of your own self-infliction. You have committed sin. Yes, people are born sinners. The Bible is very clear about that in Romans chapter 8. As by one man sin entered in the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. But you know when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died to pay the sin of the world. People go, are sinners due to Adam's sin back there in the Garden of Eden. But you personally have sinned, and you go to hell for your own sin. My friend, your pa- the patient's name is fool, and you're foolish because you have a self-inflicted sin problem. Number two, the patient's condition. Look at verse 18. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. One of the problems when people are physically sick is to make sure they get enough nourishment. This patient's condition is they won't eat. Well, what is it they won't eat? Well, they're going to get to that here in just a moment. Verse 18 also gives us the patient's prognosis. What is ahead for this patient? Again, verse 18, their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. They're nigh unto death. They are in a very serious condition. The patient's remedy is given to us in verse 20. It says, he, God, sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. How is the patient made whole? Through the word of God. The Bible says we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, even the word of God. That's found in 1 Peter chapter 3. My friend, what is it that patients won't eat that makes them nigh unto death? They won't eat the truth of the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How is somebody cleansed? They're cleansed through the truth of the word of God. Ephesians 5 verse 26 and 27. My friend, if you do not know Jesus Christ, you are a sick patient. That's one of the pictures of you. But there's one more given in the verses beginning of verse 23 through 32. You are a melting by fear mariner, a seaman. You are a scared sailor. Verse 23. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in the great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raises up the stormy wind and lifteth up the ways thereof. They mount up to the heavens, they go down unto the, again to the depths. Their soul, talk about the seamen, is melted because of the trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are, and are at their wit's end. Then they cry to the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of distresses. He maketh a storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are stilled. Here, people without Jesus Christ, people still lost in their sin, are pictured as scared sailors. We could go to the book of Jonah and find that there in that story, a great storm came up. You know the cause of it? Sin. That's right. Sin caused the storm, the storm there, and it brought, as a result, great conviction upon the lives of all the people involved. Sometimes life's distresses seem like they're huge storms that are going to swamp our lifeboat, and they're there to bring us to the end of ourselves, to our wit's end, as it said here. Notice the source of the storm. Verses 24 and 25 says this, These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep, for he commanded and raises the stormy wind. These troubles are brought by God. My friend, if you do not know Christ and you're in trouble, rejoice. You say, Brother Mark, you want me to rejoice in trouble? Yes, if that trouble will be used to bring you to your own, the end of yourself, and you say, I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm in trouble. My life's a mess. I got my own life in a mess because of my own foolishness and, and doing silly things. I sinned against God. I put myself in this position. 
Notice not only the source of the storm, notice the size of the storm in verse 26. They, the winds and the waves, mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. These are huge waves, mountainous waves. My friend, notice the, the condition and the, what it does to the mariners. They get scared. The end of verse 26, their soul is melted because of the trouble. These sailors here are experienced seamen, but they are now melting. Their heart is melting. They realize they are in a storm they cannot handle. Oh, friend, sin will put you in that kind of a storm. Sin will put you in that kind of a sickness. You cannot get out of the sin sickness on your own. You cannot get out of the storm of life on your own. You know what it brings the mariners? Look at verse 27. They reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men and are at their wits end. Their place where they realize they have no means within themselves to, to, to help their own self. There's no way they can ever get out of this condition. You know what happens? If they turn to God, Here's what God does in verse 29. Verse 28 says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He makes a storm a calm, so that the waves are ever still. Then they are glad because they are be, be quiet. So he bringeth them under the desired haven. If you ask somebody, do you want to go to heaven or hell? Any logical person, any person in their right mind is going to say, Well, I, I, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Well, the only way to get to your desired haven Haven, your desired heaven, is through the help and the and the saving work of God Almighty. This psalm goes on without me taking time to read, beginning of verse 33. After our redemption is declared, after it's described as it is, notice now how people are delivered. We're told in multiple times, verse 8, verse 15, verse 21, verse 31, we, these words, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. The same remedy for all these people. They cry unto God, but notice that God is the one that saves him. Oh, my friend, these people are saved because of a unifying quality, the goodness of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God. But notice it's done because of his labor, his work. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. My friend, we've seen the last days in Psalm 107 pictures of people. I've just described you if you have not received Jesus Christ as Savior. You are like a lost traveler. You are a rebellious soul in prison. You are a sin, a sick soul in, in, in a hospital and there's no way out. You are a, a, a scared sailor on the storm of life. But there is a remedy for all of those. If you will cry out to God for his mercy and grace, if you will cry out to God for self, to save you from your sin, God Almighty in his love and mercy will reach down and save you and bring you to heaven. Now, and along the way, before between now and the time he takes you to heaven, he will guide you, bring calm to your life. Oh, not a trouble-free life. No. Because you'll have an enemy named Satan, but Jesus Christ will guide you and help you and give you victory through his word. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for the wonderful works to the children of men. If you've not yet cried out to God to save you from your sin, cry out to him now and say, because Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed his blood for me, I now want to be saved through his death and shed blood. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.